to the channel on today's episode of 1-800, we got power. We're going to be finishing up a short block, 383 stroke motor. Um, that the short block was a symbol by machine shop. Um, the customer, actually I have, this was another customer that found me from the YouTube channel. He's been seeing the work that I've been doing with the conventional motors. So he sent it to me to finish it up. Said he wanted to get the SSP sauce. <clears throat> so show you guys what we got going on today. So as you can see, we have a complete short block with some flat top in it. It's been fully machined. Now it does have a little surface rust where it's been sitting, but that's not going to be an issue. We'll clean that off here in a second. And also let me flip this thing over to show you guys what it looks like up under it. So... So I already been notched to clearance the stroke. Now I haven't rotated the motor yet just to verify, but it was done at the machine shop and I can definitely see where the notchings have been made on the block to clearance for the stroke in the rod. <clears throat> so we're going to rotate it just to make sure everything is uh, clearance properly. We're going to clean up all the mating surfaces, all this overspray here and all the overspray that's on here. We're going to clean all that up and then we're going to get the camshaft done. So the camshaft profile that we have going, this is a custom hydraulic roller camshaft. Um, we're not going with a solid roller just to ensure everyday drivability where there's no hassle on trying to adjust valves and things like that. Uh, cylinder heads, we have an aluminum cylinder head. On this particular engine, the customer is running a Pro Max Pro, a Pro Max project x cylinder head is what we have going on this engine so <clears throat> um it will be going in an s10 so i'm pretty sure you guys are gonna be anxious to see what this motor does in it and it actually should do very well now this will be a street strip truck it will run on 93 pump gas um he may spray some nitrous later on down the line but right now it's just gonna be a nice naturally aspirated small block man so Gonna flip this thing over, get the deck surface cleaned off, lay some committed head gaskets, get ready to get the ceiling heads bolted to the block, and uh, finish up and finalize, man, the, the long block, man. So let's dig in. Now you can see right here, I have just a regular razor blade that I'm using to scrape off this surface rust. And it's, um, by it being surface rust in this form, it's gonna be sort of like sawdust when you scrape it off so it's gonna make cleanup very very easy so i just clean the block surface all the block surfaces with the razor blade took my air holes and cleaned it off as you can see once i put the air in there and um then go home the cylinder everything cleaned up and now it's ready to be um finalized for final assembly Now you can see as I lay this gasket right here, it's like right at the tip of the dial, but not quite on it. So what I do is get a socket from a hammer, stick it right over that dial, and there you go. It's on there. Don't hurt the gasket or nothing. And now we have our Project X cylinder head unpackaged out of the box. And what makes this cylinder head different from the regular, I guess you could call it entry level Pro Max head is the larger intake valve design they have in the intake runner. So like in a motor like this, a three, 83 stroke motor, even on a small block 400, with this larger intake valve being the size that it is, which is a 208 valve, <clears throat> when you pair it with a fairly large camshaft, it will it will allow to make way more horsepower than a 383 with a smaller valve cylinder head. There we go. 
and it's got these guide plates that are already pre-assembled. So what I'm gonna have to do is, once I mock up my valve train, I'm gonna stick the uh, push rods down inside here. As you can see, this is a two-piece valve guide. I'm gonna stick my push rod down in here just to make sure we don't have any um, clearance or binding issue when the push rod starts to move up and down this guide right here. Because on like the AFRs, when you assemble these, if this is too tight and not enough gap in between, your push rod will bind up and down when it's going inside this valve guide. And that's how a lot of times you can bend the push rod and you hear catastrophic failure, rockers fall off inside the head while you're under high RPM. So definitely going to double check that. But we got one cylinder head on. We're going to go ahead and get some NICs, get our ARP bolts ready, and get these torqued down, bolted down and torqued down. All right, now for our head bolt fasteners, we're running just the ARP stainless steel bolt set with the outside bolts of stainless steel inside of the really, uh black oxidized bolts. And these are, I want to say these are 180,000 tensile strength, if I'm not mistaken. 180,000 clamping force for those that don't know what tensile strip is, but we got the heads on. We're going to go ahead and get them torqued down, and then we're going to get our camshaft installed. On to the next, y'all. Stay tuned. Stay with me. All right, now, real quick, I don't want to leave this part out just for anybody that's building their own engine for the first time. Or uh, maybe building the engine for the second time, but using a cylinder head like these because you have the AFR enforcers, as you can see, the Pro Max, and a few others that have these adjustable uh, guide plates. And they are adjustable for a reason. So let me just show. I got them all loose right here. And you can see like how they slide back and forth like this. So let me just show you how they work. Just in case you don't know how they work. <clears throat> um, you can buy the original guide plates which is what i also bought just in case i need them so let me show you right here if you look at these rocker arms you can see they're they're not all sitting directly on the tip of the valve and you can see right here like those they look like they're more so slanted towards the left slanted towards the left now i've lined those up already properly but let me just show you how this goes so if you can look you see those rockers right there are not on the tip of the valve like if you look at that so a lot of times if you just set those on with those guide plates locked in place it'll cause the rocker on this outer side edge right here where my finger is to ride on the tip of the valve push down on it and then you got over here where it's not on the valve tip beating on the top side of the spring dampener here and it'll cause you to beat up the valve damage the rocker it'll jump off and then you got all kind of catastrophic failure so what I'm going to do is, and I'm probably not just going to show it, but I'm telling you guys what it is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen all these up like the other side. And then what you do is once you loosen up the guide plate, then you it allow you to move this rocker, set it in the center of your valve tip and the, uh, the roller tip on the valve. And then you snug your stud down once you get both of them sent correctly, and then you torque them down. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and line them all up, and I'll just show y'all how it look from lean with it, rock with it, to straight up and down on the valve tip. Billets on top when you see me. Candy pack.